Hello everybody, I'm Sanisha Sidro and I'm going to show you how I built Cadric, my humanoid robot. Before I made Cadric, I made a prototype using the Star Pro MG995 Digi High Speed Servos and Forex Sheets. So if you want to make your project more cost effective, you could use low torque servos and acrylic sheets. As I wanted to cover most of the basic concepts related to building a humanoid robot, I've made three videos and this is part one. In this video, we're going to cover the things required and the assembly of an arm. So now, without further ado, let's dive right in. Arduino Mega IR Remote 16 60 kg centimeter torque servos Plastic or metal horns USB cable 12 pairs of aluminium U bracket Breadboard Jumbo wires IR receiver Forex sheet for the dummy head Ribbon wire Some basic tools which I have used These are the diagrams of the arm plates and the foot plates I have transferred the diagrams to this 3mm aluminium sheet This is the chest box The chest plate the arm plates and the foot plates. This is a template out of which an L bracket can be made by cutting along this line and by bending along this line, dotted line at 90 degrees. And out of this template, four L brackets can be made and two L brackets are required to fix each servo to the foot plate. These are templates out of which two more L brackets can be made for fixing the shoulder servos to the chest box at these positions. To make a chest box, cut along the outer borders and bend it at 90 degrees along the pencil lines marked here. To make a chest box like this. These are frame support brackets which are used to fix the chest box at these places. The servos 1 and 4 have been attached to the chest box using this U-bracket and the servos have been attached to the U-bracket using screws at these locations and the U-bracket has been attached to the chest box using nuts and bolts. I have secured the servos to the chest box using double sided sticking tape over here. Now I'll show you how to assemble the left arm. And this is how we fix the servos according to their zero positions. Go to examples and then to servos and then select sweep. So this is the basic the most basic program of the servos and at this position at this position after finishing this loop what happens is that every servo will come to position 0 here we have to create a delay of let's say 5 seconds so we've created a delay of 5 seconds which means that after coming to 0 position it's going to stay still for 5 seconds so we'll get to mark the zero position when it does this and we'll be able to fix the servos accordingly. For the connection of the servos, the black wire stands for the ground connection, the white for signal and red for power. As the servo wires weren't long enough, I first soldered them to ribbon wires of needed length which I then soldered to jumper wires to make the connections. Now I'm going to connect the servos. These are the wires coming from the external power supply. I'm going to connect the ground wire to the Arduino Mega. And this is extremely essential and you shouldn't forget this step. This is how the code looks like after it's been uploaded. 
So after five seconds, after coming to the zero position, it's going to stop. And when it stops, you must off the power supply so you get that position. And now we're going to fix the horn such that we get an approximate cross. You can see closely, if you look closely, that it's not a perfect cross and you must adjust this using the programming. So the servo I've used is a 270 degree servo which means that it is capable of going from 0 degrees to 70 degrees. It is slightly different to control the servo as compared to controlling a 0 to 180 degree servo which is, I'll explain that, which means that if you write the value 0 to the servo, it would go to 0 degrees. That doesn't make a difference. But if you write 65 to the servo, it would actually move from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And if you write 118, it would move to 180 degrees. And if you write 180 to the servo, it would move to a full 270 degrees. So you'll have to find which degree you want the servo motor to go in by the trial and error method. So this is a side view of the robot and these are the different positions of the robotic arm. Okay, so if I write the value 0 to the servo, I need the robotic arm to go to this particular position in front of the robot. And now if I write the value 118 to the servo as per the scale that I mentioned just before, I want the arm to move to this position. And now when I write the value 180 to the robotic arm, I need it to turn a full 270 degrees to this position perpendicular to the robotic body and in the back in the backward direction. So this is uh, how I want the robotic arm to go when I write different posi servo positions to the servo. Let's see now how we can implement this. Now to fix the bracket, all you have to do is go to the previous program and make a small change. Instead of pause, just type 118, which is the position to which you want the servo to go now. And if you write this position, as I told you just before, the arm would go straight downward parallel to the robotic body. So let's see what happens now. The arm is now at position 118. Now I'm going to just screw in this. So the arm should go like this, which means that we should fix the bracket like this. Sometimes due to the shape of the shaft of the servo, you might not get a perfect cross when you fix the horn of the servo. So if you uh, give position 118, it might sometimes come in rest in this position, which is not perfectly perpendicular to the robotic body. So what you have to do is, you have to increment one or two degrees as required here and here till the bracket is perpendicular to the robotic body. Note down the rest position for all the servos like I've done here for servo 4 because when the robot is performing any move, it will always start from the rest position. Now to fix the next servo. I've changed the values back to pause here and here. Now we're going to repeat the same process. When it stops, we have to off the circuit. Now fix the shaft, so you get a perfect cross. Now note the position in which this hole is moving. This is how we want the arm to move. Like this all the way to 270 degrees and then back to the zero position parallel to the body. There are two ways in which you can fix a servo. Case one is when you fix a bracket to the servo and it is a bracket which moves. The servo remains fixed and the bracket moves which is the case here. The servo is fixed to the robot body and the bracket can move. 
case 2 is when the bracket remains fixed and it is a servo body that moves which is the case here the bracket is fixed and the servo body moves to make sure that the arm rotates outward like this and not inward and fix it in the opposite direction just like this Change the value here and here to 130 degrees, which means that the servo would go from 0 degrees to 180 degrees as per the scale. And if all goes well, this should happen. Two of these small brackets are fixed like this, and now I'm going to fix it to the servo like this. direction in which the horn is moving. The arm would go like that but we want the arm to come forward as this is the front of the robot so we just fix it like this. Let's fix the arm plates. used different color coded tags for wires coming from each servo as there are 51 wires going to the chest box and it gets pretty confusing in there when it comes to wiring and if at all anything goes wrong it will be easy for us to identify to which servo the wire belongs to if we do this the wires go like this into the chest box Perfect. So we've assembled the left arm and using similar logic you can assemble the right arm. Thanks for watching.